to Counter Diary, Counter Diary, we are telling you the untold stories of Liberia. My name is Manuel Kotu. On today's edition, we are somewhere world way, way down in Lofa County. And to be precise, we are in Zozo, Lofa County. And we are actually at the uh, Alternative Youth Radio, and we want to see exactly what is going on here. A few uh, days from now, they're going to be dedicating this area, and uh, a lot of young people around Zosha District will be benefiting from here. But let's like, so talk to the CEO and see exactly what they are doing here. So keep following, come to the diary. We are telling you the untold stories of Liberia. All right, so let's get to talk to the CEO of the Alternative Youth Radio, a radio station based in Lofa County. And to be precise, this is the first youth radio in Liberia. Maybe I'm not aware of any other one, but this is the first time. We're going to have a radio station that is fully dedicated to empowering the young people. So let's get to talk to the CEO here on the Council Diary today. And I want to say, um, let me meet. Uh, thank you so much, my brother. How are you doing? Uh, thank you, uh, Kofi, and uh, great to see you here. And welcome to AYR. Okay, it's great to be here. I'm happy. I mean, I just look at the whole environment. It seems to be very different. And... Um, Let's talk about Alternative Radio. All right, so we're standing right there. You look out there, you see the inscription is uh, Alternative Youth Radio, AYR uh, 98.9 megahertz. Okay, and this is the media complex in Zosa, Lofa County. But let me talk to uh, uh, Mr. Kwabo. Uh, James, how are you doing? Well, good. Uh, Katu, and again, I'd like to say welcome to the media complex compound mm. of the Alternative Youth Radio. And uh, we will shortly be transitioning here. All right, so why we try, I'd just like the camera guys to come closer a little bit to get us in. Uh, you're talking about your big transition. Let's talk about the history behind this building. I mean, uh, is, is it just a building or, I mean, how you came about with this uh, Alternative Youth Radio? Well, the, the issue of Alternative Youth Radio started uh, as a dream to me back in 2014 uh, in Zorzo City, Lofa County. Firstly, I began to see that there were great potentials for young people and kids. So I launched, with the help of other young people, we launched an idea called Make the Children Smart. And that program, we saw what the children were doing. We saw their, their approaches and their articulation. And I said, wow, there's a skill that we need to tap into. And that is to have an exclusive platform that will be just for children and young people and we began to look out to see how we could bring that idea. So the first uh, person I met was the former city mayor doing, hey, you need to help us in the area. You mean the, the first city, uh, uh, the, the former uh, city mayor of yes, South South. Johnson? Yeah. Okay. So I met him and said, oh, hey, I need you to help us. I have a dream. And I don't want to dream to die. Can you help us with a spot? So he carried us to the telecom tower. And then he gave us a spot and we were able to begin the construction, hmm. begin to, cons to, to construct the structure there and we had our building. Like, and so at that time I had an employment with the International Rescue Committee uh, immediately when I came from my hmm. university on hmm. undergrad study. So I had a plan. so we began to look in the direction of ensuring that uh, we keep some low resources and while we talk to potential donor partners uh, to be able to help us. So fast forward, uh, in 2019, uh, we had a break in, in terms of our coverage hours around 2019, yeah. Mm -hmm. So we came on precisely in 2016, late 2016, because uh, when the oil mill uh, was relocating and leaving the country, so they had a spot to uh, the, the base there, oil mill going to uh, Monovia way. So we talked to the city mayor again. So we want to be squatting here in the meantime, so that you can be able, uh, we can be able to construct and complete the, the structure up there. So we accepted and we began to broadcast in the continuum. Okay. Uh, yeah. We, so we from broadcasting from a container, yeah. now they have a full structure here yeah. uh, in Zosa Lofa County. So um, tell me, when you were broadcasting from the container, uh, 
was there at any point in time you said, you know what, I can't make it with this, I just had to cut it off? Well, there was some level of uh, discouragement at first because it's a new thing. A lot of young people have gotten used to a system where they will not want to follow policy. That's the first major challenge. And so to really have a generation that will be committed to policy issues and live by it, it's been our first nightmare that we fought to ensure that people understand the reality. At times, some people feel discouraged and go away, but we kept this dream that we reached this far. And so fortunately for us, we became Mandela Washington Fellows in 2019. So our ideas about youth development improved when we went to the U.S. and came back. So when I was going to the U.S., I said to myself, hey, if I come back, I want to do a media conference. All right, so something he just said, uh... When I go to the U.S. and come back, I want to build a media complex. And today, that dream is right here. And, you know, one key thing I just figured from him is like, you know, the U.S. is a place of uh, opportunity. Yeah. A young man will go there. I know some folks will go up there and say, let me pack my bag and just go and enjoy myself. But he decided that, hey, I will go back and make sure I uh, build something that will be empowering the youth. So uh, when you came back from the U.S., and you came that's when you started the, the project yeah yeah in 20 when i came back in 2019 around august because i after our program in july i applied to to do some follow-up meetings with uh possible supporters and donor partners in the u.s because while you are on the fellowship you have an opportunity to reach out to potential donor partners as a fellow uh, if you can talk to them and convince them on your programs that you're doing you have so I wanted to uh, I needed to have done more follow up so I applied and requested an extension in my stay so I stay up to like August and when I came back at that time we went out of the transmitter because the transmitter we're using it, were, it, it was not for us we like a borrowed transmitter at first yeah <laughs> so, so listen to this uh, you are broadcasting uh, ninety eight point nine on a borrowed transmitter yeah okay let's go so. We, we had to turn this transmitter over to the original owner uh, in good faith. And so we began to, to sacrifice, put one or two dollars together, keeping it. To the point that I was doing some consultancy, I, I nearly never ate my salary because I kept everything. And I, in fact, I joined a club, a yearly saving club. So we began to put some money. So when I went on a fellowship, no, no stipends were getting for food. I would keep it and add it up and talk to other people. Hey, we got this one. Can you help us? So before we came back, we uh, sent for already our 700 watt transmitter. Wow. That was the first transmitter. So the moment I came to the country, we had a transmitter coming. So in 2020, early 2020, we came on on air with our own transmitter. Now, just from broadcasting on a 700 watt transmitter, because of our connections we established in the U.S. We're able to buy additional equipment. So at this stage, we have a 3,500 watt transmitter that's on the standby. 3,000 from a borrowed transmitter to 700, uh, make, uh, you know, 700 uh, K. Is that even what the case? Yes, That's yeah. 700 uh, megawatts. Yeah. Megawatts, uh, I'm going to say watts, right? A 700 watts uh, transmitter. Now he's talking about 3.5 K. You know, uh, that means that you're going to be taking over uh, Lofa County. Lofa yeah. County. And to yeah. be precise, we're talking about Salai, yeah. uh, Fonjama, uh, maybe and other you yeah. know, nearby. I think oh, yeah. you can even go yeah. up to, to, to uh, Bon County as well. Yeah, because even at this, at this point, what happened is the fact that we are a youth radio and being the first unique youth platform, we want to reach every young person in all of the villages and all of the towns. So to do that, we did an assessment that what uh, if we have to get to full max, uh, let's say maximum capacity, how can we cover Lofa? So we did our feasibility and we realized that that particular transmitter. But hey, here is the challenge: we don't have the electricity. So what we what we've done, we just kept it in a box and operating our 700 watts. Even with the 700 watt, uh, you know, FM transmitter got escape zones. Mm -hmm. We still have uh, places like FOIA getting on some places because you're on top of the hill yes so we are trying now to what we're trying to do is to be able to to construct our own tower and relocate everything to this central office uh, that is a media complex that we started constructing some two years back 
Uh, this is something that we started two years back, and I'm I'm grateful that you also contributed to this particular because we wish I would raise phone from even the US. You know, when I went to the States, that was one of the greatest things that the Mandela Washington Fellowship did for me. Mm. Connected me with people that I reached out to and they could send, you know, support. And the bank, the bank here, we took up to 22,000 United States dollars. 22,000 dollars as a loan on three different occasions. All right, so we're gonna hold you there. Uh, let's take a look at where the break is currently. And then uh, when we come back, we take you through the new complex. Keep watching. This is Counter Diary. We are telling you the untold stories of Liberia. <music> So now that you've seen where exactly they are broadcasting from, and then they're going to go into their new premises, uh, I want uh, uh, Mr. Kwabo to take us through this area, just a few minutes, so that we get there and then we continue our conversation. So let's go in there. Yeah. Um, so, this is, so we're about to enter the complex, and then he's going to be explaining to us. And he said where we are. So this is. So this is the um, the waiting area, uh, the porch. You see that the name. Yeah, I see, that is written out there. Yeah, so, and then you come to the lobby. Okay. Uh, where we have a lobby. Uh, the light is on. Oh, yeah. So, we are going to be recently retouching the thing, because on March 25, we'll be launching our official opening space. So, this is our lobby. And here, we've got two bathrooms in here. Okay. This is... Uh, General bathroom here, mm -hmm. um, this is the general. This is the general bathroom. So we have this place as the conference room. This is about two by something. Or so yeah. So this is the conference room. Like when I come in, around uh, 60, 50 between 50 to 60 people. Depending on the city okay. So this way we got two. There's an exit door also for the conference room. This is um, this is the office of the <laughs> <laughs> the CEO of office. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Even though we have a lot of lights, yeah. right? So this is the, the CEO's office. It has a bathroom okay. as well. And there is a bathroom here. And so this place. It's going to be used for specific for a series of these guests where we will come to visit and you have the time to. All right. Yeah. So um, there's an exit door as well. So there's an entry and exit. Okay, so this is the hallway uh, going to the studio. So in here, uh, you have the office of the station manager. Okay, the station manager office is there. Yeah. All right. Now you have the business director or the business section okay. here. And the reason you wish to be located the business people will come you can join and go to the studio. The okay. business people will easily see you. And <laughs> see you they say you have to make some money, you know. That's how you yeah. And let me show you first that the general office is for program. Okay. Program and also use. So. Here we have various decks for our news and program staff. So this place is exclusive for office. Uh, two, two departments. Okay. Mm -hmm. Then this is the production room. We're still doing some work here. Mm -hmm. uh, this is the production room. Here you, you notice that the, the sound system is different in here. 
very cool yeah. sound system in here yeah. great i love it yeah so this place is going to be used for production because this is a training radio so some of our kids will come they will be recorded here pre-recorded and then you save the material do whatever editing and then you send it so even somebody's on the air it's not uh it's not an issue so you just be here do your production and then it's safe for airing all right so where are we going in the next place we're going to the um the main studio okay. this is the main broadcast studio so here the main broadcast studio but uh what happens we have two sort of lights okay. so if you come here this place has the capacity of hosting up to six studio guests so oh, wow. see three press uh three people on this side another three this way it can even host up to two uh hosts or two producers at the same time. So one can sit this way, another on this way. And then you have a central mixing board. So this is a state of the art uh, that we started. And this was a dream that we told the, um, the US government that when we come back, we embark on the construction of a media complex. And we're very excited about the fact that we've been able to realize it. Okay, guys, uh, those of you watching us on the Counter Diary, uh, I want to say thanks to every one of you for watching. If you're watching this on YouTube, please make sure you hit the subscription button to subscribe to our YouTube channel. And uh, I want to ask James, um, what motivates you to do what you're doing? Um, it's a fact that I, I grew up as a disadvantaged child. Hmm. Uh, when you say disadvantaged, what do you mean? Meaning a so-called hmm. in real life. And that's why sometimes when I tell my story to people, it, be, it become like, an inspiration to them. I slept in a building where when rain is falling, we have to stand and pack the mattress to, to sweep and to wet the floor and sleep. Mm -hmm. At times it gets difficult, I had to sleep in a tailoring shop. Mm -hmm. And I decided to come back home. I say, the suffering that I went through, mm -hmm. I don't want any young person of my age or in my location to go through those things because sometimes if you don't have a strong mind what happens is you get involved in a lot of unacceptable attitudes and society begin to throw you away so i just imagine as as young as i was i then in around 12 15 15 or 16 years old lost my mom my dad so it meant that i had a struggle to be at this stage so when I, when I think about these things, I think about how we can make life better for other young people. So I know what it calls suffering. I know I've gone through, I've felt it. So I understand exactly that it's not good. So I'm motivated by the fact that we got more potential young people who have had similar stories that we have, but it's also good to be an inspiration to them. So if you see me, most of the thing, I, when I went to Colombia, same enough thing, my colleagues would ask me, well, why you don't want to stay in Colombia? I said, look, there are a lot of potentials in Lofa County. And, and most of the things you see that I'm here almost every time. And because I'm so inspired, I feel that everything that I want in life, everything that I want to do in life should be in Lofa County. And I'm more motivated about the fact that if I'm staying in Lofa, I feel more happy as compared to even staying in Malovia. All right, so uh, like I, I've answered all of the questions I wanted to ask you at this point. You've just answered everything you want. And uh, one message for other young folks, because like I said, you say you want everything to be done in Lofa. There are other people who feel that, um, I mean, why should I have, you know, get uh, my education and then get a master's degree and then they say, let me go back to Lofa County. Why? I mean, what's your own message to them? The fact is, uh, this misconception that when you go back home and you're educated, they will kill you is wrong. And young people need to graduate from that stage. I think you're more welcome home when you are doing things to improve the community to inspire. You saw what actually happened today. What happened here today was the fact that the community members came up to be able to clean around the building because they are more involved in the program. So to all of the young people watching me, it's important for us to to disabuse the mind of people who think that when you are educated, you come back home, they will kill you. Since 2005, I came back home after the war. Trust me, I've lived peacefully with my people and I feel inspired every time by their actions to do more. So why you think for almost 18 years, 
I got my bachelor degree. I stay right here. The only thing that carried me to Monrovia was to do my master. I got my master. I'm back. So I feel a few what come and people need to erase that notion. So it's just a key message. Young people need to do away with the notion that once you are educated, you come back home, they will kill you. It's, it's wrong. All right. Thank you so much, uh, James. It's good to, to, to hear your story. And I'm sure most of you watching us on the counter diary uh, is an inspiration to every one of us, including me. He's one of those that motivates me. Actually, you know, I don't say most of the time, but I want to see what he's doing here. It becomes more like an inspiration for me. So I want to say thanks to every one of you for watching this edition of The Counter Diary. We'll be back here on the 25th when this play will be officially dedicated. Probably that day I'll sit down on the radio just sit behind and say, hey, what's up, folks? Those of you right here, you're listening to AYR Hour, uh, 98.9 in South of Lufa County. It's good to be back here. My name is Simando Kotu. Thanks for watching. And thank you, everyone. Thank you.